Hi everyone. Uh, the composer that I wanted to talk about this week is named Maurice Ravel. He was a French composer who lived from 1875 to 1937. And he is often thought of, kind of grouped together with a composer I had made a video about a couple weeks ago named Claude Debussy, who is another French composer who is considered an Impressionist composer. Um, so Ravel is also considered an Impressionist composer. And just to review, the Impressionist composers were inspired by the Impressionist painters, and they were concerned with um, creating moods and um, impressions of um, in their work. Generally, they were depicting literature or paintings, other art, um, in their works, their musical works. And they were really concerned with color, so creating interesting sounds um, in kind of new ways that hadn't been done before. Debussy did that primarily through harmony, and Ravel also used harmonies kind of similar to Debussy. He was familiar with Debussy's work. He was maybe half a generation younger than Debussy, so um, he, they were familiar with each other's work, and um, Ravel was influenced by Debussy, who was slightly older. Um, Another way Ravel created color in his music, or the maybe the way he's most famous for, is through orchestration. So orchestration uh, refers to how a composer um, arranges his music for the orchestra, like what instruments are playing what parts of the music, and maybe in what combinations they're playing when they're playing together. Um, and... The reason that that creates interesting color is because every instrument, every um, type of instrument has its own unique sound that it creates. Um, and so, it, as I mentioned in the video about Debussy, it probably seems really strange to use the word color to refer to sound because these are two different senses. We talked about the senses, the five senses in our science a few weeks ago. And color is something you see, and music is something you hear. But we do talk about color in music a lot and use words that relate to color, like bright or dark. Um, sometimes we even also use words that are more referring to like a tactile sense of touch, like warm or brittle. Those are um, words that we can use to describe sound um, and the quality of sound. But Ravel was really a master at knowing the, in a really detailed way, the qualities of the sound that each instrument could create and coming up with new and interesting ways to use those instruments in his music. Just um, different combinations of instruments and what instruments would sound really good on different parts of his music. So um, that's what he's really be probably best known for as a composer is his orchestration. And so as an illustration of that, one of the pieces that I picked to listen to for him is one that he actually did not compose himself. He took a piano piece and arranged it for orchestra. So the piano piece is originally by a Russian composer from the Romantic period named Modest Mozorsky. And Mozorsky was working at the same time as Rimsky-Korsakov, who I talked about at the beginning of the year. Um... So Mazorsky wrote this piano piece it's called Pictures at an Exhibition, and it has multiple movements, each of which is trying to depict a painting, and I, I included in the description a link to those paintings if you're interested in looking at them. Um, but what I did is I included videos of the last two movements of the original piano piece by Mazorsky, so you can hear what it sounds like on piano. And then I also included a video to those same two movements um, being performed by the orchestra in Ravel's orchestration of that original Mazorsky piece. So I did that just to allow you to hear what a difference orchestration can make because it's all the same notes, it's just um, in one case it's played by the piano and in one case um, it's played by the full orchestra. And so you can hear, I think, what a difference that makes as far as how dramatic it is, and just the great contrast in mood and um, color, really, um, that you can get when you have this full range of orchestral instruments to work with, like Ravel did, as opposed to 
the piano, which can make some contrasting sounds, but not nearly the the range of contrasts that you get in an orchestra where you have, you know, a tuba contrasted with a violin, you know, very, very different um, types of sounds that they can make. So um, that Pictures of an Exhibition is a piece that is associated with Ravel because he orchestrated it and it is performed a lot. Um, by orchestras today. So that gives you kind of maybe an example or a um, kind of a concrete, yeah, example of um, what a difference orchestration makes in the effect that a piece has. The piano piece is neat, but I think it's just really effective and um, much more engaging with the full orchestra playing it where you get that range of colors. So that's a piece that Ravel orchestrated but didn't compose. The other piece I chose that Ravel did um, compose is called Mother Goose Sweet. So this piece was originally written for some children that he knew and it's five separate movements. It's a suite, um, a collection of movements, and there's five of them that are each about different fairy tales. Um, and I'll put in the description what each of those movements is because in the video um, the the movements are marked but the titles are not in English. Um, the first one is Sleeping Beauty, the second one, and I think that's supposed to be the moment when she falls asleep. The second movement is from Tom Thumb. The third movement is a fairy tale I'm not familiar with, but it is set in, um, the Far East. Uh, the fourth movement is A Conversation Between Beauty and the Beast, and the fifth movement is called The Fairy Garden. And the whole piece is really neat. Um, but I think the, um, if you don't have time to listen to the whole thing, I think the third movement that's about pagodas and kind of the oriental world is really neat how Ravel evokes that, that world and that culture, um, in his music and especially with the orchestration using lots of woodwind instruments and mallet percussion instruments like xylophones, um, I think he just creates really neat sounds there, and even if you didn't know the title, you'd probably be inclined to think, oh, I bet this is about something in you know, China or Japan or something like that, because it just has that feel that he really captures. Um, the fourth movement's really neat, even if you don't listen to the whole thing. If you listen to part of the fourth movement, um, you'll hear how he, Ravel gives a musical voice to beauty in the clarinet, and then partway through the movement, he depicts the beast with a contrabassoon, which is a much um, deeper pitched instrument. In the, in the, when we study the orchestra at the end of the year, we'll study the bassoon as one of the woodwind instruments. And the contrabassoon is even a lower, um, deeper voiced instrument. So it's neat how Ravel uses those two instruments to represent the two characters and how he... Um, at some points they kind of get along, the music, the music for those two instruments gets along. Sometimes there's, um, showing lots of contrast to show the contrast between the two characters in the story. Um, so that's a neat use of orchestration, how Ravel, um, gives each of those characters, um, his or her own instrument. But I think the really, the, the best movement in this piece, in my opinion, is the fifth movement, which is called the Fairy Garden. And I believe it's supposed to be about the moment when the prince awakens Sleeping Beauty. Um, but I think Ravel does such an amazing job in this movement of, through his orchestration, just creating this magical, uh, shimmery, shining sort of sound that just sounds like fairies. Um, so... If, if you can only listen to one movement, I would suggest listening to that, that movement, but um, they're all really neat. Um, so I would just suggest when you listen to his music, just listen to the beautiful sounds um, and, um, you know, because it's on video, you can kind of see what instruments are playing um, at different times, but just listen to the colors that he creates and um, appreciate what a master of orchestration he was because he created such beautiful sounds through his use of the orchestra, almost like a, a painter with a palette and having not only a wide range of colors, um, but also even really subtle shades of those colors. So um, if I had to describe Ravel, maybe I'd describe him that way as almost like a painter with different sound colors. So um, 
He's a wonderful 20th century composer. He didn't write a ton of music. He died at a relatively young age in his 50s um, and was just a really painstaking composer, but um, really beautiful music. Also, really beautiful melodies. Sometimes I think Debussy's music, since he and Debussy are often thought of um, kind of together, I think Debussy can be a little harder to get into um, as maybe a newer listener to classical music because it's not always full of great melodies, but I think Ravel was maybe a better composer of melody than Debussy. Um, Ravel even told his students that melody was the most important thing, and so no matter what else you did um, with harmony, with orchestration, that was all kind of decoration around a melody, and that the melody had to be great before the composition could be great. So I think that's another nice thing about Ravel's music that you can maybe hear in the Mother Goose Suite is um, really nice melodies. Um, but he's a wonderful 20th century composer, so I hope you enjoy his music.